Welcome to the video. If you are here watching, you're likely coming from Shy's audience to learn more about Starfighters. Or you heard about us talking about Starfighters on a space, in a tweet, on an Instagram, and you are in the right place. Extra, extra, read all about it right here. As we get started to this video, quick reminder, there is a link right below the video. It is pinned below. If you're watching on X, on YouTube, just scroll below. And that link has all of the information regarding the raise, the company, the team, the background, and so many other things that are important to be reviewing if you are potentially going to make an investment. With that being said, super excited that we are working with Starfighter Space to get this round out and make people aware of everything that they are doing. Shy, welcome to the party. Talk to me a little about what gets your, what gets your blood going. What gets you feeling nicey when it comes to Starfighters? Well, let's start from the beginning. You guys all are fully aware I'm a thematic investor. So I love to invest in early disruptors and specific secular growth themes. Space economy, that is absolutely the next frontier after AI. And you can, there's a lot of derivatives of AI, AI, physical AI, quantum, whatever you want to call it. Like the next frontier after all that tech is the space economy. And it's going to be a multi-trillion dollar economy in like 10 to 15 years. And you think that's like a ways away, but guess what? It's going to go by really quickly. Just like 10 years ago, people thought AI was just like, there's no way. That's going to be way too futuristic. Like cars driving themselves. That's like, I'm going to be, that's 2050s, 2060s, 2025. I went to a Waymo yesterday to a bar. It's a reality in the near term, just like in space economy is going to be much more of a reality in the near term than a lot of people expect. So in these kind of early uh, growth thematics, there's always going to be disruptors within specific niches. In, in space economy, for example, everyone knows SpaceX. The Trump's first buddy, Elon, essentially has become the king of space via sp SpaceX, Starlink, whatever you want to call it. Um, his presence in that whole economy, it's massive. And it's similar to uh, – it's a type of situation where – we haven't really seen in the headlines all the benefits that Elon's getting in that space economy due to Trump becoming president. But in the conversations that Gov and myself and a lot of the others uh, who are in this video are having with the actual stakeholders of these companies, like it's happening. In 2025 alone, like the red tape bureaucracy has drastically got diminished than it was like five, seven years ago. So, the tailwind is happening right now. You just don't really see it in the headlines yet, but under the hood is absolutely happening. So you guys are fully aware I love Rocket Lab. Got into it very early on. I saw the vision of what Rocket Lab was going to become in the space economy. The space logistics company of the future, you can call it the FedEx of space if you want. I also love AST Space Mobile. Um, and I, they're going to become the American Tower of Space, especially with all the partnerships with every single telecom on this planet is essentially partnering up with them. So there is another niche that really isn't talked about much. And that's why we're all gathered here today in this video with Starfighter Space. And they are going off of what I just said that Rock Lab and ASTS is Starfighter is essentially this, going to become the Uber of the space economy because – they're not trying to build another launch company. There's a lot of companies who just are space launch companies. That's fine. They don't want to deal with that. They want to deal with launch agility. And there's a massive difference in that because just like how um, like Uber was trying to disrupt the um, going from point A to point B. Like, let me get, let me re go back a little. So Uber didn't try to replace airlines or but didn't try to replace airlines or like these kind of point A, point B's long range uh, kind of transitions from where someone wants to go. They try to dominate the intracity city transport. So like, again, Starfighter isn't trying to replace a rocket. So in that metaphor I'm saying is like Uber didn't try to replace airplanes, airlines. They were trying to do the intracity city transport. Same thing for Starfighters. Starfighters is not trying to replace rockets, but rather try to dominate the tactical layer of the space stack. So think of it like the last mile or I don't know, last 50 miles, uh, R and D the integration, the suborbital flight testing that turns all these innovate, innovative thesis into actual like flight ready technology. 
and sell booking time on a 50 or 100 million launch vehicle months or years out. Like customers can fly, fly experimental payloads next week. So like th they drastically just, they want to create this environment where it's all about speed. It's all about agility. And in these kind of early secular growth themes, you need the ability to test out these way from left field um, thesis. And in order to do that, you need to be able to do that in a very cost effective and efficient manner. You guys are fully aware of, uh, if you guys follow me, which I'm assuming you guys do, uh, if you're watching this video right now is I love AI. So there's a reason that I like to compare NVIDIA. Like, the reason I love NVIDIA so much is because of CUDA, their CUDA platform. Yes, everyone loves their hardware. It's tier one chef's kiffs hardware, but there's hardware competitors out there that are way less pricey. People stay into NVIDIA's pricey ecosystem is because of CUDA, because it creates this virtual environment for all these uh, AI machine learning theses to test out. Starfighter is becoming the aerospace equivalent to that because the infrastructure where Anyone from a scrappy startup that's in Long Beach to a prime contractor can iterate on mission critical systems without relying on these multi billion dollar budgets or these ridiculous timelines. So it's not just about access, it's about access on tap. So you can access it whenever you want and it doesn't have to cost you an arm, or, um, arm and a leg in order to do so. So it's like launch services behave like cloud compute, like fast, flexible, scalable. And when you think about what made Uber revolutionary, it wasn't the black car service. It was the availability. So the availability of going from point A to point B, that's essentially what Starfighter is engineering. It's that same predictability of going for the volatile fragmented world of launch and suborbital access, it gives you that one tap, that one ride, that run predictable results that won't cost you billions of dollars or you have to wait months at a time that you can do in a matter of next week. And yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I do. We've talked to the CEO and Rick is incredible. Uh, he is also a user. So that's like, that's the best kind. Like he's a founder. He also is a, former pilot and he knows the ins and outs of what's required to be successful in this field. And he also has a great talented team around him that are OGs of the space industry that they have created actual laws themselves. So they know what's what they can not exploit, but what's what they can massage a bit to benefit themselves. Uh, so I think that this is a really interesting opportunity and especially in this kind of reggae that they're currently uh, offering to retail. I loved it when I saw it because back in 2024, Q3 or Q4 of 2024, the whole space thematic got a huge bid, massive bid. doesn't matter what company you were. Uh, you caught a major re-rating because maybe there are, they saw the signs and the tea leaves were – Trump led presidency is going to benefit Elon and in a space economy, a high tide raises all boats where if Elon benefits via Starlink SpaceX, everyone else will benefit as well because of that red tape bureaucracy that's going to get diminished. So that, every name, ASCS, Planet Labs, Rock Lab, etc., they all got re-rated because of that. Now, because innovation time window got drastically cut in half, maybe even by 75%. So... Rock Lab at four bucks. Rock Lab right now is at twenty bucks. ASTS at two or three dollars. ASTS is at I don't know thirty dollars right now. I think this reggae that Starfighters is offering, they're basing it off of valuation back in Q three of last year, before all the other names got re-rated, and that's just the beauty of this process. Where like we're able to go backwards looking on getting this kind of valuation that we wouldn't be able to get if it was a publicly traded company. Because if they're a publicly traded company, back when everything got re-rated, this would be a two to three X multiple. It's just end of the day. It doesn't matter what you, if you disagree with my, my thesis on Starfighters or if you disagree with whatever moat that they have, like it's going to get re-rated because the whole bucket got re-rated because there's such few disruptors in the space. So now it's like living, it's like time uh, back to the future, a little environment where like, you can just like go participate in Rock Lab at four bucks or ASTS at two bucks 
with Starfighters at this current valuation is reggae because it's being priced accordingly to back then when those, those names were at that price. So I do think this is a really interesting opportunity. I do think that this is launch agility is an absolute niche that's going to be a necessity in the space economy. And Uber is a great reference on like when Uber got created, like a lot of people like, I don't know, like my, my, my principal might be driving me to point A, point B on the summer months. Like that's weird. I don't even, I don't know if I want to do that, but no convenience is a very violently underappreciated characteristic of innovation and launch agility provides you that. So yeah, uh, Gov, I'm excited. You and I went to um, Florida. We met the team firsthand. We saw um, their great product. Uh, we went, went to the Kennedy Center. That's another huge advantage that the Starfighters have because uh, they just are part of the industry for decades. So, like, they have those connects a bit. And that is also a massive moat in this industry. Like you guys are fully aware, like I love Rock Lab because they can launch in New Zealand, for example. They don't have to be handcuffed to domestically to NASA sites. Well, Starfighter has a NASA connection, especially in the Kennedy Center. So that is an advantage that a lot of other co companies don't have, and they can't also just pay up to get. So they have to partner up with Starfighter because Starfighter has that real estate moat, if you want to call it, just like uh, – Location, location, location. That's what matters in real estate. It's kind of adjacent a bit in the space economy. But yeah, um, love, 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 I really appreciate you, Gov, for introducing me to this company and the talent behind it. I'm really excited to see their future. Absolutely. And I agree with a lot of what you're covering. You know, early stage startups are always going to have, well, they're not even a startup necessarily. They've been around for a while at this point. But early stage companies, especially in newer industries, right, where we're talking about mass satellite launches, which is a little bit more newer than some other industries out there, there's always going to be higher risk, right? But I think that they've done a really good job of offering as many value adds as they can to diffuse that risk, starting with the team, with working themselves into an industry that is booming right now, but finding a niche within it that the big players are not playing in, having that connection with NASA so that they can, you know, launch from the Kennedy Space Center. They clearly have those connections. I mean, we went and visited and we saw those in person. They're the only company that's doing what they're doing that's been invited to do that out of the Kennedy Space Center, which shows a lot of gravitas. They also have connections with GE Aerospace, right? They have these partnerships already in place. It's a lot of what I want to see as an investor. If you're a pre-revenue, which obviously they are, I want to see partnerships. I want to see leadership experience. I want to see other people doing their due diligence on you and signing off. And they've pretty much gotten that from all the major players in this game. And so right now, again, just bringing it back to that raise, they're raising $35 million. They've already raised over $21 million of that. That also has a big show to it. They're being backed by Justice Palmer from Fortuna Investments. He has had, you know, billion dollar uh, exits of previous companies that have shown real conviction and his ability to take a company and get it to the right place. So you have a lot of things lining up. And then the storyline, which you outlined, right, the theme here and how this is something where perhaps if they had launched this raise a few months later, they would be raising at a few hundred million valuation, but they're not, right? They're raising at around that $100 million valuation. I think it gives people a much more opportune entry here than it could have been. Or if people were like, oh, I'll wait until they're public later this year, right? They could go public and that stock could pop and it could be $250 million on day one, hypothetically. And so you kind of have an interesting opportunity here for sub $1,000 to be able to get in. So I like the story that you outlined, Shai. Yeah, it's exciting opportunities and uh, I know a lot of people experience FOMO. Like, oh man, I miss Rock Lab. I miss ASTS. There's an opportunity you can get before yeah. you miss the votes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, um, I know that everybody, like, this is your hard earned money. And so I want you to, you know, make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Again, I would encourage you to go through. Like this video, we're, we're giving our thoughts and our opinions, and obviously it's exciting that we're working together with them to get these thoughts out, but you really have to go into the nitty gritty and understand the plan, the numbers, the concepts, and so that's why just go through, take a look at the sheet. It really has everything. They were very detailed as they went ahead and put it together. They pulled a ton of data from around the world on this industry, and they presented it to you in a really easy to understand manner. So go take a look at it. If you have additional questions, feel free to drop them below the video here, and we can just respond to them right there on YouTube or on X, whichever one is best for y'all. Shy, thanks for doing this with me. This is exciting. I'm, I'm super excited to see where this company goes.
perfect.